the BTFC RDA for MogVape and Vape and Fagan. The BTFC RDA was sent to me for review directly from OgVape. This is a collaboration project between OgVape and vape reviewer Mark Fagan, or more commonly known by his YouTube name, Vapen Fagan. Now, according to Mark, the BTFC wasn't conceptualized by him. This was a project that OgVape already had in progress, but they brought Mark in to help along the way. And from the sounds of it, he actually did contribute quite a bit to the project, so it does make sense to call this a collaboration. Anyway, let's get into it. In the box, you get the BTFC RDA, two drip tips, an Allen key, a squonk pin, spare o-rings and spare post screws it's 24 millimeters diameter it's made of 304 stainless steel it has a peak insulator it has bottom and top airflow and it comes in colors of black stainless steel gunmetal and rainbow starting at the top with the drip tips you get two drip tips here the pre-installed tip is a black delrin tip and the extra tip is a frosted tip the delrin tip is short and it's flush with the metal that protrudes from the top cap. The frosted tip doesn't sit flush with the protruding metal on the top cap, so it affects the aesthetics a bit. Whether that's good or bad is up to you. I don't mind it. Both tips are the same diameter, inner diameter, but the frosted tip is a little longer, so that might be more comfortable for some people. Both drip tips fit into the top very tightly with the o-ring inside the top cap. The tightness is important on this tank because it allows you to pull the top cap off by holding the drip tip. The top cap is short and connects to the barrel. The top airflow is controlled by this top cap. It's not too tight. It's easy to adjust the airflow. I would say that it's a little loose though, and it gets even more loose with e-juice on it. Since it's so short and because of the looseness, I worry that it might pop off in my pocket. Pocket. All right, now let's talk about the barrel. On the outside of the barrel, you have the logo, which I think looks really simple and nice. On the inside, there are several lines of different grades. The one at the top slants towards the drip tip, so that probably helps direct the vapor and the flavor. The lines near the bottom of the top cap, I believe, are designed to prevent the top cap from being pushed further than the deck. It's a fine feature, but it also causes a minor problem with putting the barrel on. A lot of times, it gets caught on the deck, and you have to sort of wiggle it around to get it to slide on. It's not a big deal, but it is something that I'm surprised that they didn't notice or that they decided not to fix. Once it's in the right spot, the barrel slides right onto the deck nice and tight. The restriction seems just perfect. It's easy to move around to adjust the airflow and just works well. All right, now let's talk about airflow. So the BTFC has both bottom airflow and top airflow. You can't close either side off, so this is a dual coil only atomizer. You can see that these slots are pretty big. So as you can imagine, there is a vast amount of airflow that you can push through here. And that means you can get massive clouds if that's what you're looking for. But you also have the ability to shut down either the top or bottom. There are usually pros and cons with both types of airflows. Uh, RDAs with bottom airflow usually have better flavor, but are prone to leaking. RDAs with top airflow rarely leak, but they often have less flavor. But that's not the case at all with the BTFC. With a top airflow shut down, you do get slightly better flavor, but the difference is hardly noticeable at all. I don't know how they did it, but it's amazing that this RDA puts out so much flavor with a top airflow open. And to combat leaking from the bottom airflow, you can see that the intake holes in the deck are raised way above the juice well. So while it's certainly a possibility that it can leak from the bottom airflow holes, you have to dump a ton of e-juice in here to get it to leak. Both airflow options were designed very intelligently, and I think this is a really where it helps for manufacturers to get input from reviewers like Mark before putting something out on the market. Okay, let's talk about the deck. There are a lot of really cool things happening in this deck. First, look at that juice well. It's deep, but there's also a lot of metal in here, so that can be deceptive. I was able to fit about two mils of e-juice in here, so yeah, nothing crazy, but still pretty good. And now the coil posts. Everybody loved the ease of installing and clipping coils in the drop and dead rabbit, but this takes it to a whole new level by making it even easier. You just drop the coils into the holes and clip them from the back. And this is awesome for two main reasons. One, you don't have to try to fit your wire cutters into a tight space. And two, you don't have to pre-measure the wires before installing. This is probably the easiest deck that I've ever built on. And those post holes are big, so you can fit some pretty big coils in here. You also notice that the bottom airflow holes lead right beneath where your coils are positioned. It hits the coils perfectly and creates really good flavor. And the last thing about the deck is that it looks like one of the deck posts comes out, but I can't figure out how it's held in place. I don't see any screws, and I tried moving it around a bit with a screwdriver um, with the 510 removed, but it didn't budge at all. It clearly comes out, but I didn't want to break it, so I didn't mess with it any further than that. All right, now for squonking, so it's also squonk ready, and the squonk pin is not pre-installed, which according to Mark was intentional, and the reason for that is because he hates if a squonk pin is pre-installed and he doesn't realize it, then puts it on a device and fills it up with e-juice to have it leak everywhere. I think that's a really good reason, and something that I've never actually thought about. Uh, I've never had that happen to me because everything I get goes under the camera while I'm opening it. So uh, I would catch that, but I can definitely see how easy it would be to make that mistake. 
And that's another small but really smart idea from Mark. Anyway, the squonk pin works just fine. It pushes plenty of e-juice out from these little slots in the deck. And the squonk pin seems to push e-juice out from the sides and the top, while probably also sucking up excess from the side holes. Since I can't see anything beneath the posts, I can't tell you much more than that, but it works for me. Okay, so that's the BTFC from Ogvape. I don't know the story of how the BTFC got its name, but it is an acronym for Bottom Airflow, Top Airflow, Flavor, and Clouds. It's a silly acronym, but it absolutely makes sense for this RDA. This RDA has intense flavor, and with all that airflow and ability to hold big coils, it can definitely make massive clouds too. This has become one of my favorite RDAs of all time. I love this thing, and Mark and Ogvape did an amazing job together. I really only have two cons. The barrel doesn't always go on smoothly, and the top cap is a little jiggly, which could make it easy to fall off. But other than that, no other gripes. So from what I'm seeing online, you can get it for around $30 in most places. In my opinion, it's definitely worth it. All right. Thanks for checking out this review and I'll catch you on the next one.